All right, so let's take a look at the culmination of this is projectile motion, which is our 2D motion. So now that we have the vector information out of the way, we can talk about what are, how do we solve projectile motion problems? So our vector quantities, displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, accelerating, our normal acceleration, our normal vector quantities and kinematics variables, um, same kinematic variables. However, because now we have 2D vectors, they may be pointing up and to the right, down to the right, straight up, straight down. They may have X and Y components. Now, in general, the magnitude of the vectors, the length of the vector, direction is which way it's pointing. And one thing to note is speed. In one dimension of motion, speed was the absolute value of the velocity because there was no direction. But now speed is the magnitude or length of the velocity vector. So we'll keep that in mind. That's a slight twist when we go and move into two-dimensional vectors. Now, our problem-solving steps are very, 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 very similar to what we did. Where The whole idea is we have these vectors and we think of them as just split into X and Y components and then treat them as two separate one-dimensional vectors. So our problem-solving process steps are going to be we're going to sketch out the motion. We're going to list the five kinematic variables, but you're going to do it for both the horizontal and vertical directions separately. We're going to assign positive and negative directions for the horizontal and vertical directions. And then for each kinematic vector var variable vector, we're going to draw the arrow and decompose them into the X and Y components. So that means we're going to find the displacement, decompose into the X and Y. Find the initial velocity, decompose it into the X and Y. So we're splitting up all of the kinematic variables the vectors into X and Y components. Now, a couple of tips, and we'll get to those tips when we go through some problems. Now, time is the only variable that's shared between the X and Y components. We want to, and then the rest is the same. Identify the unknowns, what look, uh, and what we're trying to solve for. We apply the kinematic equations for the vertical and horizontal based on the three known quantities and the unknown we're looking for. Um, so let's just take a look at an example problem. So we have a ball that's thrown horizontally from a cliff. So it's thrown horizontally here at 10 meters per second from a cliff that's a height 100 meters. Okay, so this is 100 meters here. How far does, it ball, how far does the ball land from the base of the cliff? So it's going to go down like this, and it's going to land right around here. And I want to know what this distance here is. I would like to know what that is. This is what I would like to know, right? So let's list out. First step is to list out in the X and the Y all of the kinematic variables that like we did in one dimensional motion. I know it's been a while ago. We did grass of motion, we did all kinds of stuff, but just remember, we're gonna list out those kinematic variables. And now we're gonna look at each one of them. We wanna assign positive directions. I'm gonna make right positive. You can make up positive or down positive. It doesn't really matter. We'll make up positive in this case. And then now we're going to look at the displacement vector first. So remember the displacement vector is an arrow from where it starts to where it ends or where we're interested in it. So that's our displacement vector. And we want to decompose it into components, right? So we'll make a component that goes down and then a component that goes to the right. Okay, so in the horizontal displacement, notice the horizontal displacement, that length, that's what I want to know. So this is what I'm looking for right here. The vertical displacement is down 100 meters. It's pointing down, and that length is 100 meters. So that is negative 100. And that displacement, that's like distance, right? So it's this vertical distance. That's going to be negative 100 because down is the negative direction. We set up was positive. OK, so now we look at, OK, so that handles the displacement vector. Now let's handle the initial velocity vector, the velocity at the start of the motion. It's 10 meters per second to the right. OK, so that means there's no vertical component. The vertical component is 0 because the vector is only pointing to the right. And then um, it's pointing to the right at 10, so we put 10 here. Final velocity is the velocity down here. Don't know what that is, so not given in the problem. And the acceleration, the rule is still the same. When we're in the air, the acceleration is downward at 9.8 meters per second squared, or 10. Not You can use 10, round to 10. That's fine. It's downward at 10. OK, or downward at 9.8. So that's 0 in the horizontal direction. It's not pointing to the right or left at all. It's only pointing straight down. And that's going to be negative 9.8 here. OK? And then we don't know the time. Now, the thing about the time vector, OK, this is the one thing I was going to say. That's what this part is here. Time is the same between the x and y components, because time is not a vector. So the time variable here and the time variable here are the same value. Now. 
On this side, I want to know this, but I need three known quantities and I don't have it. However, on this side, I have three known quantities. And if I solve for the time here, I can then plug it into here and then I'll have three known quantities and I can solve for this guy. So what kinematic equation is gonna relate that? Right. That's gonna be negative 100. This is gonna be zero is one half times negative 9.8 times t squared, and then you can solve for t. That's gonna be um, 100 divided by 4.9, and then square root of that. I get 4.52 seconds. And then you can plug that in over here, 4.52, because it's, this, it's the same time for the x and the y. That's the only variable that's shared. Everything else is completely separate, that's shared. And then we use the same kinematic equation, but now on the x side, because now we have enough information. We're gonna say the displacement here is gonna be 10 times 4.52. And then the a is zero, so we don't need to include that term there. So that's gonna be 45.2 meters. Okay, so that's it. That's the process. That's what we're gonna do. Let's look at another one. So ball is thrown at an angle now 30 degrees above the horizontal. So this is 30 degrees with a velocity of 10 meters per second from a cliff that's a height of 100 meters. So same cliff, uh, 100 meters. Okay, how far does it land from the base of the cliff? So step one, draw the motion. So we, we're drawing it out and it's gonna land here. We would like to know this horizontal distance from the base, that's what we're looking for. And so now we're gonna list out all our kinematic variables Delta X, V zero, V A T. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna sign our direction. So we'll make right positive and up positive again. And now let's talk about the displacement vector first. Displacement vector is a vector from there to there. Okay, and we decompose it into, because you remember displacement is a vector from where it starts to where it ends. It's a straight arrow. And then you decompose it to going down and then to the right. Okay, so it goes down 100 meters. So that's negative 100 meters on the vertical displacement. Horizontal displacement, again, is what I'm looking for. But now what's different in this problem is the initial velocity. We got to decompose the initial velocity vector now. Okay, so that's got to decompose. And here, we're going to make it to the right and up. That's our vector decomposition. This is going to be 10 cosine 30 degrees and then 10 sine 30 degrees because the opposite side, because they make that right triangle, right? So it's pointing to the right, right is positive in the x direction, so that's 10 cosine 30 degrees. Vertical direction, it's pointing upwards, 10 sine 30 degrees, and we said up was the positive direction. Final velocity, we don't know. The acceleration is pointing downward at 9.8 meters per second squared. So the acceleration is zero. There's no horizontal component, but there's a vertical component of negative 9.8. And that's why I put that in the notes in the problem solving steps. Note horizontal direction, if there's no air resistance, the acceleration zero in the X direction. And in the vertical direction, it's downward at 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? That's what that part is telling you there. Okay, so again, similar thing. We have three known quantities. Um, he, on this side, so we could solve for the final velocity, we could solve for the time. We're gonna use the time plug that into here. That will then give us three pieces of information which we can then use to solve for the horizontal displacement. So we're gonna use the same kinematic equation, right? Which one relates, it's based on the known quantities and the one unknown we're looking for, right? So this is negative 100 is 10 sine 30 degrees times T plus one half times negative 9.8 T squared. Now. This is not a math class. That is to say that your goal is to just be able to solve it. And so we're gonna use Desmos, given that that's the common tool on your AP exam for Blue Book. So it's very easy to calculate. You could just say, you could just make it, move the 100 over to the other side, set it equal to zero. So we're just gonna say Y is equal to 100 plus 10 sine of 30. Now you gotta switch it to degree mode when you're doing this. So if you guys are, that's how we switch to degree mode, times 30 um, plus one half, oops, times negative 9.8 T squared. And so we have times zero. Look, we have two numbers. The negative number doesn't really make sense, okay? Because we want to know when the Y is zero. So that's going to occur at 
4.63 seconds. So that's going to be t is equal to 4.63 seconds. And so then we're going to look at the horizontal side, use the same equation. It's going to be 10 cosine 30 degrees. That's the v0 times the time. We're just using the x column variables now. And this part is 0 in the x column because the a is 0 here. And so then we're just going to say, oh, we're going to take that number. So we're going to do 10 cosine, oops, cosine of 30 times 4.63. And I get about 40. We'll just say that 40.1 meters like that. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found it really helpful. If you'd like more support, maybe you need more multiple choice practice, maybe you just need more guidance and things like that, I have plenty of information on my website. If you look in the description below and go to www.bothellstemcoach.com, uh, I will explain all the ways I help students be successful in their AP classes.